Good morning, everybody. It is July 7th, 2014, and my name is Jim Lee, and I'm going to be doing the Climate Viewer 3D report for the day. If you could come over to climateviewer.com and click on Climate Viewer 3D right up here, it will load up our very special app. It's based on Google Earth. You may need to install a plugin. It is available for Windows and Mac. We are currently working on a open G or WebGL version that does not require that. It works on Linux and mobile as well. Um, but that's to come. Until then, check out our fancy Google map, Google Earth map. Now I'm going to show you how to use this. Um, if you have a mouse wheel, you can roll in and out. You can zoom in and out. Uh, you can use your right mouse button to drag it up and down to zoom in and out and rotate. Um, and finally, you know, clicking with your left mouse and dragging will pan. There are also controls up here to control your view, so let's just get right into it. Um, today's news. Daily storm log, as we can see, we have wind damage across North Dakota and hail. If you want to verify these, you simply click there we go. tornado. Wind damage down here. And you can see, oh, that's right near an airfield. Um, up here at the top, there's a little uh, zoom icon. If you click that, it'll zoom you back out. And we have tornado damage all across Des Moines, across Iowa, up in Tama, Grundy, and Franklin. Several tornadoes touched down yesterday. And then uh, more wind damage across the upper northeast. If you want to come over to the weather page on here, you click on weather. And you click on next rad you can see the current radar image and apparently the canadian radars are down or not all of them they're showing some data i'll have to work on that um, flash flood warnings across all up and down the mississippi here and not a lot going on there um, we can also animate that if you guys like you can bring this up and literally just pull the slider and as you advance it it will make you an animation which you can pull back and forth like this take just a minute but this is the exact same data that your weatherman uses it is pulled from uh, the National Weather Service live every single day as you can see it says 7 17 2014 at 7 51 a.m. 7 55 8 o'clock and you just keep dragging it and you can see everything over time all right, so that's the weather for now. Um, we also have clouds and lightning. If you want to see the, the latest lightning strikes, you just flip this button here, and you can see we've had lots of lightning associated with the storms recently. All right, let's get back into the alerts. Uh, earthquakes for today, we had several large ones over the last four days. If you click on the USGS feed, this is under alerts. Then you click the little arrow right here next to earthquakes. You can expand it. It'll download. You can see a download icon there. And then you can see magnitude 7, 6, 5. We've had two sixes and uh, one seven. Here's your sixes out here in the middle of the ocean. It's pretty normal. And again, right at a uh, boundary location. And the most recent one happened today in uh, Mexico, 7.1. Now, interestingly enough, if you look at this, this is the U.S. Geological Society's uh, feed. You can notice there's always going to be earthquakes up and down uh, the West Coast and a couple in here. Missing from the data, very oddly enough, if you come down here and you click on CSEM, this is from the European side of things and they also it's the center for seismologic uh, Mediterranean uh, Euromed earthquakes and you'll notice that right here in Oklahoma the Oklahoma fracking quakes are not available on the USGS feed where you do see several things coincide here's the the red ones are European the yellow ones are USGS you can click on them and see that this is USGS this is uh, the CESM um, if you come over here to Oklahoma, you're going to notice, excuse me, you're going to notice that all of these are not included in the USGS feeds, and we're kind of wondering why at this point. Uh, let's go down here and look. 
if you turn on under pollution you click on fracking America and this is a very large file these green Mr. Yuck uh, logos are fracking uh, injection wells and oil wells and you come down here sure enough most of these are coinciding with fracking injection and oil wells um, this is making big news right now and uh, it's very odd that every single day you will see many earthquakes in Oklahoma none of which are on the USGS feed for obvious reasons um, so that is that let's get back out of there I'm gonna zoom out I'm gonna hit X and that clears my entire screen I've now cleared all my layers and I'm gonna go back up to alerts and we're gonna check out the volcanoes so uh, right here Cleveland Islands I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna click on show terrain and show 3d buildings which should make this nice and 3d oh, look at that Isn't that pretty Cleveland report for June and had a little bit of activity there and here let's take a look at that one not a very big one and over here oh that's nice so, our active volcanoes for today, and the active fire mapping program. This is going to show us across America what our fires look like. Let me bring up the NASA while we're at it. These are past 24 hours. This is a very large file, again. Um, and as you can see, we have fires across America. You can check these out. doesn't look like anything special. I don't see any large forest fires that we need to be concerned about. Um, and then finally down here to current disaster declarations, this is FEMA. There are more, um, more layers in here for you to be able to pull up on fires. You can find a lot. Here are current uh, cities and states begging for federal disaster aid. Just so you know. Um, red or most current, green or older, orange or in between. So those are your uh, government beggars. Obviously, need to fix some things, and we're going to move on now. So over here in satellites, if you click on this, you can see we have a satellite tracker, which will show you in real time all of the satellites around the globe. I'll turn it on just for uh, giggles, and then right underneath it, we have the NASA Gibbs um, Earth Observing System data, which will uh, allow you to see the current satellite images. Now, it starts off at 12 2013 you need to pull it up to today to see the current image which says 7 17 2014 what you'll notice is it is incomplete at this point because it's still coming up so if you want to flip back to the day before at this point you just do this let's go over to 7 6 and we can see the satellite imagery for yesterday it might take just a second to load so obviously we have a big storm cloud moving across here and this is the storm producing all of those uh, tornadoes and wind damage up here. Let me get these satellites out of my way. By the way, these satellites, you can click on them. They'll tell you all about each satellite. Pretty neat stuff. And this is all live and it's all real. So um, for those concerned about contrails and ship tracks, I want to show you something very neat. Normally I default to uh, this layer right here. It's uh, uh, MODIS. Terra and Modus Aqua. Those are two satellites that um, are constantly scanning our planet. Um, they offer similar instruments, uh, but they also, and this is the true color one, so this is what it would actually look like with your naked eye. If you come down here to Modus Terra, Corrected Reflectance, Bands 367, for you Contrail and Ship Track lovers, you can see some pretty interesting stuff here. Now I'm going to go back to yesterday. Right there. We're going to zoom out. If you zoom out, it'll load everything up. It takes just a second. This is a loading bar at the top. It'll tell you when images are loading. And they seem to constantly be loading. So you come in here, and let's see what we can see. 
gives some very nice coloration to the aerosols, um, shows thickness. And let's find a ship track. I'm sure we can. Right here. There's some ship tracks for you. And you can see the straight lines. And what it does, particularly in cloud masses, it, it highlights them. See how you can see that right there? Isn't that neat? And again up here. Big ship tracks. That's a chemtrail. So come over here to the NASA section. It's bands 367. And you'll be able to see uh, lots of things that you can't with the naked eye, to say the least. It looks pretty clear off the west coast today. I'm pretty proud. All right, so let's move on. Um, there are many other instruments in here, water vapor, cloud top pressures, and all that that you can get into, aerosol, um, optical depths. Um, we'll get into some of those at a later date. I'll try to mix it up when I do these. Um, let's hop over here to weather. I'm going to zoom back out by clicking up here at the top. And I'm going to load up the next red animation. I'll just get that one on there real quick. So to do that, I'm just going to turn on all of the radars for America simultaneously. And we're going to pull this forward. And as we do, you're going to notice everything load. There's the pictures. And there's the pictures. And there's the pictures. Until we're all the way through the bar, and then we'll zoom back in, and we'll animate it. Let's see if there's any crazy uh, stuff on radar today. Just about done. And of course, your speed will vary. So let's come in here and check it out. Ooh, we got some laser beams down in Louisiana. Check it out. Uh, these are pencil mode, test mode, laser beam mode for your radar. Could just be an anomaly, but I've occasionally seen these beams last for 8-10 hours straight without ever moving. This isn't so bad. You also have some kind of line building up here. That's very interesting stuff. So sparkle, sparkle. Um, this is ground bloom. Most of these white circles. Um, this is your unfiltered next rad, so you get to see a heck of a lot more than you do on the cleaned up version. And occasionally you'll see some real oddities. Um, looks pretty clear this morning, so that's a good thing. All right, back over to here. Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. I always wonder about these. Now, check this out. It's clear, it's clear, it's clear, boom. What is that? Just uh, some background data, I imagine. Very weird. And if you want to see the radars themselves, you can come down here to Places and go to Electromagnetic and then click on North American Doppler Radar and we'll actually put all of the radars on there. And you can see that they do clearly associate with each of these blooms. Each green one is a NEXRAD. That is your weather radar, Doppler radar. The red ones are Joint Surveillance System or FAA long range radars. These are supposedly to track airplanes and anything moving overhead. Um, but they are also used for uh, weather. So they can check the weather with that. And then finally the yellow ones, these are Terminal Doppler Weather Radar, TDWRs. Um, they're usually next to an airport and they point at the ground. Um, and their purpose being to um, see wind right over the runway so they can tell them you know when they're landing we have wind shear and things like that so um, that's how you use this and it's it's pretty neat for people that are um, into the you know uh, harp ring scenario to be able to bring this data up so you just flip on these American Dopplers and of course you can see this is a file I created myself this took about um, four weeks just to put these Dopplers in but there you go. That's your uh, Doppler radar for the week, or for today, excuse me. And that's how you do the animated. Now I'm going to come up here and click X, and that'll turn all those layers off. And let's take a look at the Google animation for the clouds. Same scenario. Move the cursor, let go, it'll load it up. And you can animate that as well. Very cool stuff. So take a look at that if you like, and um, we're going to check the drought monitor real fast. Looks like.
Lake. We're still experiencing quite a bit of drought out on the west coast. Look forward to you guys getting some rain here shortly. I'm um, sure they're cloud seeding like a boss to get rid of that. Um, you can also see things like river flood levels if you have that. Our uh, five day forecast. Um, as you can see, we're expecting quite a bit of rain off the east coast and up in here. Um, the darker the red, the more rain you're going to get. It has totals on there. And then green, obviously, is just slight chance of rain, very little rain. But you can do all this yourself every single day at Climate Viewer 3D. You can come over here and just do it all yourself. Um, temperatures, wind chill, wind direction, um, these are all METAR. If you click on it, it'll bring up the temperatures for across America, you know, at a glance. You don't have to, you know, wait for anybody else for this stuff. And they're color coded as well. As you can see, I'm over here in South Carolina. We're expecting 80s. Big to do. Um, and then wind knots. Um, you can bring up the wind directions. And this is what um, our National Weather Service relies on. So you can see the direction of the wind. And the number of ticks on here include, uh, usually mean that there's increased wind. So where you see two ticks here, there's more wind there than where you see one tick. Um, but, you know, all of this stuff you can learn over time. There's no rush, and it's all available to you. Enjoy yourself with it. Um, and then we're going to get down to here. We have ocean observations. We're going to skip those. I want to show you guys some space weather real fast. So here is our Aurora Borealis for today and our Aurora Australis for today. And we're going to bring up the total electron content. And this is also animated. And apparently the animation is down for today, so we'll just check the single image. No bright red burns today. Looks like our content is low. Enjoy the peace and tranquility and improved radio reception. That's our space weather. There's also many other things in here where you can go in and look at ionosons from around the world and other um, space weather related things. And finally, we're going to do uh, a random um, layer from Climate Viewer 3D every day. So today, why don't we do 10 most radioactive places on Earth? Um, there is an article associated with this on Climate Viewer. He said he was once a lizard too. Right here. And you can open that up. And what you'll see is Hanford Nuclear Site. Very polluted. The Mediterranean. Uh, the Mafia dumped uh, nuclear radiation, nuclear waste in the Mediterranean. All of these are undisclosed locations where you can see that a ship was dropped and there is a group doing studies on that. The Somali coast. Everybody's heard about Somali pirates. Have you heard about all the nuclear waste dumped on their um, beaches? These are mapped out as well. Uh, Mayak, Russia, the chemical combine. Um, this is an ash disposal pond full of nuclear radiation. Um, this is a chemical weapons uh, nuclear site that is very badly polluted. Sellafield, UK, um, nuclear power plant similar to our Hanford, has been leaking radiation into the Irish Sea for a very, very long time. Here's the pipe that does it. And, uh, yeah, heartbreaker. Siberian Chemical Combine, another nightmare. Uranium enrichment plants, reactors, um, blew up, uh, had a uh, plume move over the area. Very, very ugly. The Polygon in Kazakhstan, um, this is actually a nuclear testing site. Um, why don't we do that? It's clear. So nuclear test explosions right here. It's right underneath it. And you can see the nuclear explosions that happen at this site. If you come in here, look at that. That's a lot of nuclear explosions. And for those who doubt the validity of this information, that these are not real, can't be real, right? This, this can't be real, right? Let's hop over here real quick. I'm going to show you something. Ooh, slow down. This is in America. Oh yeah, this is Nevada. And 
here's our test explosions. Now what you see immediately, some of them were done in the air. There are people called the downwinders. They're very sick. They live downwind of all these nuclear tests. As you can see clearly here, that is a hole in the ground where those nuclear bombs were exploded. And each of these is the crater left where a nuclear bomb exploded. We are all radioactive at this point. So that's that. Let's turn that off and then come back over here. And of course, that was Polygon. Very dirty place. Um, Melusu, Kyrgyzstan. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. But this place is in, a, in um, like a valley. And they're mining all along here. And basically, the radioactive runoff is so bad that everybody in the town is very sick. And of course, we have Chernobyl. I modeled this in 3D. These are the radiation levels. I kind of put them as like a, an extended chart. So you can see that obviously the elevated levels are here in the middle, um, greater than 40 curies per kilometer square. Um, this is the radioactive uh, neutral zone um, or the radioactive exclusion zone. You're not allowed to go in these areas for the most part. Um, and then finally, of course, everybody's favorite, Fukushima. The nightmare that does not stop. And there's the radiation totals for it as well. And you can see those just by clicking on it. And with the references, so you can see where this chart came from. So I turned this chart into 3D for your viewing pleasure. Now, um, since we're talking about that one and we got just a minute left, let's go ahead and add this one in. Here is the actual radioactive plume. It is also available on Climate Viewer 3D. It says Fukushima cesium-137 seawater impact. And you can do the same thing as before. You have a slider up here. If you slide it, it will adjust and let you animate this over time. There are many, many frames in this. Um, this is a very high detailed uh, model plume dispersion done by ASR. And you can see over time the radioactivity growing in the Pacific Ocean. Unfortunately, this model stopped at uh, 3 1 2012. So this is from 3 2011 when the, re um, when the reactor blew to one year later. In one year, that's how big the radioactive plume got. We are now in 2014 and we have had it hit the west coast already so this is an ongoing problem i really hope everybody cares i'm jim lee from climate viewer 3d climateviewer.com climate viewer news and i'll be uh keeping you updated using our climate viewer 3d app i suggest you come over here and try it if you have anything that you'd like to see added to climate viewer 3d if you know of any kml or kmz google earth files that are live on the internet and you want to see them in here or you want to create your own uh, and be part of the fun let me know um climate viewer 3d is mapping pollution privacy and climate change and we would like you to come help us map out things like chemical weapons dumped in the sea nuclear radiation explosions, uh, fossil fuel problems like coal ash ponds, geothermal um, issues, uh, fracking, you name it, bayou corn, um, geoengineering weather modification. If it happens to our world and it impacts your health, we're going to put it in one place so you can find it all. Um, I really appreciate your time and please uh, stay tuned with us. And uh, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not.